Hey everybody and welcome to week three. By now you should have seen my announcement that everyone needs to be in 2016. That is in our Blackboard shell on the announcements page and hopefully you've all seen that and I've put some information out how to uh, get your free office 2016. Just follow these instructions if you will. Um, I believe you, you get about five uh, freebies. So if you've got, like I am at my home, two or three computers, um, go ahead and do all of them. All the computers at school um, are up to snuff now, so to speak, and all computers have been uh, downloaded with the Office 2016. So this week when we are doing our homework in SEMnet, we will be using 2016 and that's what I plan on using. If you've already submitted your homework for um, week two, uh, that was chapter one in 2013, no worries. We're going to go right into week three and start fresh with 2016. So in SimNet, we'll go right to our weekly folder, week three. We're going to be doing guided today. Independently, you will be doing the two independent projects, 2-5, 2-6. Don't forget to finish up your chapter reading for the week and then round out the week and end it with a nice quiz. Okay, this week there is no uh, download for resources for the guided. Uh, make sure that you look at those for the two independent projects just to be careful of that. You'll start your file the typical way. And by the way, once you learn this, it'll go much faster because the week, each week will always be the same and it won't be changing. Once you've downloaded, go ahead and enable so that we can save. Fastest way to save, if you remember correctly from my last week's video, is not going to file and backstage view. It would just be your F12 key to bring it up quickly. Remember, um, as you're saving or doing um, your homework, it's best to practice the quickest way to make a move. Saving through the backstage view takes time to pick up your mouse, move your mouse, and go that way, whereas just doing an F12 will get you right to what you need to do. Do not change the name of your uh, project. Leave it with your name and it's called Info Tech Salaries 02 for Chapter 2. And just go ahead and save that. We have four slides that we're looking at on the left hand navigation pane and the thumbnails. You've now completed number one and number two on the instruction sheet. Um, before I forget, um, you can download the instructions. That's what I enjoy doing so that I can write in the margins or take notes uh, if I need to, if I forget how to make a move, or just go ahead and open it up and maybe if you're lucky enough to have two monitors, move it over to the second monitor. So on slide two, we have bullets and what we're going to be doing is we're going to take these bullets and we're going to be changing these to smart art. And if you haven't used SmartArt, it's a cool, nifty little tool to use. So let's go ahead and take a look at three. It says on slide two, we're going to convert the bullet to text to a SmartArt graphic and then modify the style and colors. 3A is select the bullets, the text, and click the, Smart, the Convert to SmartArt button. So guided projects always have um, a little bit more information and instruction to them. That is in your home tab up in the ribbon in the paragraph group and you can find it right there. You will need to click on the down arrow to open it. 3B says select smart, select more smart art graphics to open the choose a smart art graphic dialog box. These are called dialog boxes wherever you, um, whatever program you're in, it could be Excel or Word as well as PowerPoint, but these are always referred to as a dialog box. 3C, select the relationship type, and then the counterbalance arrows. So you think about a balance beam or a seesaw, um, so that's what that looks like. And then just go ahead and click OK. 
Now we're going to apply the cartoon style. And we already have um, this box here is highlighted, and you'll see that this one is accepted. But what we want to do is we want all of it accepted and not just this. So just make sure you've got one solid line going around all the information. And you will notice up in the top ribbon that the Smart Art Tools was turned on for us um, as a default, which is very nice to have. We are within the Design tab. And now we're going to go to the Smart Art Styles. Use your More button. These are referred to as More buttons. And if you happen to be in a different view, and let's see if I can find one, this is called your Launcher. We're not going to be using that today, but back in Design, you want the More button for Smart Art Tools or Styles, and we want Cartoon. I can tell you that Cartoon is really a 3D feature and it'll be the third from the left and if you notice on my screen that when I hover certain things the actual word for them does uh, pop up there and shows exactly what it is so you don't have to try to click on every single one to find it. Now we're going to select the down arrow shape pointing to fewer layoffs and click the shape fill button list arrow. So we have this already selected. We're in design. We've already designed what we want it. Now we're going to format it and we're going to fill that shape and make it a little bit different. So in 3F it says to select gradient and under dark variations you have headings, no gradient, light variation variations, dark variations, we want to click linear down to emphasize the downward movement. I will tell you that when you look at these you can see how it starts really dark up top and then gets lighter green towards the bottom. That's your linear down. This one just happens to be going linear right because it's dark here and going lighter towards the left. So if you look at those this one's from the center. They all show the color, the same color, but it's like in a different pattern. So linear down. <clears throat> now you're going to select the up arrow and you're going to repeat the same move except, guess what? We're going to choose linear up gradient. So shape fill, gradient, and we want linear up. Okay, now we're on number four. After slide two, you're going to insert a new slide with a title and content layout. Instead of just being on slide two, I like to click in between the slides. It just makes it a little bit cleaner, a little bit easier. And after you've done that, you will notice that not everything is lit up anymore. But our new slide is. And so we want title and content. Now that you have your new slide selected, on 5A, it says that we want to type employee salary satisfaction. We're also going to put a chart in here. We're actually going to do a pie chart. I'm not for sure if you all noticed last week when we were in here and doing new slides and we had the title and content, but you can insert a table. We'll be using insert chart. There's your smart art graphic again. You're able to do videos, online pictures, and then pictures from a file that you may have saved. Like, for example, uh, when we have resources when we're doing these projects. But go ahead and click the insert chart. You want to make sure that you've picked Pi on all charts listed on the left side. And then the instructions in 5C tell us to grab a 3D Pi chart. And that's normally the second one for the Pi's. It doesn't necessarily work for all of these, but for Pi, you can kind of memorize that all 3D is going to be the second pack. Once you have that picked, go ahead and say OK and close that dialog box. Now you'll notice that we've got our pie chart, but it's empty. We've got some stuff that say first quarter, second, third, and fourth quarter. You aren't able to change those here, so what happens is an Excel spreadsheet pops up and you're given um, a cell range 
um, A1 to B5 that shows up and we're going to change these in order to be able to change the actual pie chart and our, and our um, vertical title down here, um, this legend. So you're going to double click into cell B1. That's the only way to do it. One click won't do it. Double click. And on your instructions on the right hand side on page 2 is figure 2-116. That information is what we are going to type in. And you notice that I took out everything except for the S. It's because, you know, it's we don't want to waste too much time trying to um, type in the whole set of the word satisfaction. So just take out everything but that S. Now, you are able to move these around. Another way is to double click if that's what you would like to do. Um, I like to make mine big so that I can see. And we're just going to type these in. Tab takes you across, and when you enter, it takes you back to that first cell that you were in. So to save a few seconds on your final, try to remember that and keep that in mind. By the way, if I haven't told you, your final in PowerPoint for the uh, certification is about 50 minutes long and no more. It's a time test and you're going to have probably uh, about 40 questions or so. So you need to be very quick and precise and also correct. You don't want to lose points where it's easy to lose points, but you always want to do things the fastest way. That's why I tell you to save as with F12 instead of picking up your mouse to going uh, backstage view. It's the same thing con concept here. Also, again, please make sure that everything is correctly spelled and that it's exactly the way it's supposed to be. You've got some nice easy points to gain here in this Excel spreadsheet, you don't want to lose a half a point because you've got a number wrong or you've got a, a letter or a typo, something wrong here. Once you've done that and you've completed putting the information in, just go ahead and close up that Excel spreadsheet that popped open. And now you are going to take the chart title where it says satisfaction and we're going to move that to the top left of the chart area. So just kind of hover around to the edges until you have your mover and then just move it over to the left. That's a left click, hold it down and move it. While it's still selected, we are going to change the font size to 24 points. In your ribbon underneath the home tab, you're able just to take that and make that to 24. Now we're going to click the chart elements button. It's the plus sign. And on the right side of the slide and select legend. So legend is always already selected for us, so that's good with check mark, but there is a small triangle. Go ahead and open that box up. And we are going to put our legend to the right. So it moved from the bottom and now it's to the right. G says increase the font size to 20. Make sure that the box, the legend, is selected and make that 20. Um, the other thing is don't mess with the actual font itself, just the size. Click the chart elements button again. I'm in, I'm in H. And this time we want to select data labels. And so you can check mark that and go ahead and move that in there. And once you're in there, you're going to click inside. So we have these data labels on the inside now. You are going to select all of the data labels. If you just click it one time on one number, they should all be selected. Very convenient. And you're going to increase that font size to 24 points. Again, I'm not changing the font style. I am just increasing the size. And now we need to apply bold. The fastest way to do it is Control B. You can also, in the font group in the Home tab, just 
just click the B, but that's picking up your mouse, though, um, and taking a couple extra seconds to do that. So Control B will get you there as well. Just make sure that you still have those selected. Now we're on to six. On slide six, we're going to modify the table formatting. 6A states select the table and increase the font size to 20 on slide 4. So slide 4 and now we've got the table. Make sure it is just the table and it's not certain parts of it. We don't want just certain parts, we want the entire table. And we are going to increase the size, the font size to 20. By the way, for those that are pretty savvy, I haven't taught this yet, but you can right click and bring up what's called a mini toolbar and basically do the same thing instead of going up here, but I'll leave that up to you for now. I believe that we will be covering that in a later chapter. In 6B it says select row header and banded rows. Now some students get caught up with this, select the row header and the banded rows. This is a little bit different move. So first, and I want to be clear about this because there was some confusion last week on the homework as well, read the entire question and just kind of look at it and then make the move. So here in our instructions in 6b it says table tools design tab and so we're in table tools. We need to click to our design tab and over on the left hand side you will see the word header row and banded rows. Once you have done and clicked those, then you're set for there. And then in 6C it says apply the themed style 1, accent 2 style. So we're still going to stay in table tools in the design tab. Now we're going to go to the table tiles styles group click your more button and we want themed style 1 accent 2. So this is theme style 2, theme style 1 accent 2. So what the header row and the bandit rows did was basically our header row looks a little bit different. Um, it's got a darker brown backing, white lettering just to give it that pop. Your banded rows is, you know, every other one has some different colorations to make uh, it more pleasing to the eye, if you will, to kind of stand out so you can see some differences in the different rows. Now you're going to increase the table height to four inches and click the center vertically button. So we're going to go to table tools, which we're already in. And now we're going to go from design to the layout. And this is a little bit different move. So here in the table size, you're going to be looking at um, making this to four. I like to just click right in there and type in four instead of using your up and down. Again, you want to um, save a couple of seconds. And now we want to vertically center it. So that's alignment. And so we have center vertically. The ones up here are a little bit different. This is just center. This one is center vertically because you're centering it with the actual slide itself, all of it, but it's vertically. And then E says select columns. And by the way, columns run this way. So this is a column. And then if you were to go this way, this is referred to as a row. So we want columns two through four. You're able just to left click that. Your arrow needs to be pointing down. You would just left click and hold your left click down and then release. And we are going to change to right alignment. So right alignment, or in this case it says align right. Okay, so you're done with that. Now on slide four, you're going to insert a new slide, or after slide four, you're going to insert a new slide with a titled and content layout. Again, I like to go right after, 
click New Slide and Title and Content. On slide 5 we have a title that needs to be typed and it is Salary Change Selected Jobs. Be careful that you capitalize each of the words and don't forget to add your comma. Again, those are easy points that you don't want to forget. Uh, now we're going to click the chart button again. We're going to insert a chart. And it looks like they want us to select an 8C, the clustered column. So we're already in column and we already actually have clustered selected. And you're able to kind of look around in there and take a couple seconds and do that. Clustered column, now just click OK. We are going to replace the spreadsheet data with the data shown in figure 2-118. So you're going to select the column D first. And again, just hover just around the D and you'll see your, I call it a cursor, but your pointer will switch um, directions and how it looks. And then just hit your delete key. And actually, I'm going to do a right click and then hit delete. That way it actually deletes not just the content, but the entire column itself. And we are going to go ahead and type up the information that is in here. Now, if you happen to be typing and you find that um, your columns aren't uh, giving you enough space or you get a little pop-up dialog box that says, hey, wait a minute, you know, are you expanding your Excel spreadsheet or um, these columns here? Then all you need to do is just click off of the little small dialog box, a little warning box that pops up. And yes, you are able to expand these to go down. You would just grab the purple and the blue bar that are next to each other, left click, and then hold those down. You are actually able to expand those as much as you would like. And they, they do uh, move around. If you're done typing, I would encourage you again to go back and go ahead and expand those so you can kind of see what's going on. And then make sure that there are no typos and that you have the right figures located in your cells. And once you've made sure that that is done, then just go ahead and click off. And then you can see that we've got some things. Um, the information is here. Okay, once you're done with um, D, we're going to move to E. And E, 8E says delete the title chart or chart title. And actually, there is no chart title. It actually just reads chart title. If you wanted one, that would just be a double click to get inside of that um, box. But in this case, we're going to delete the entire chart title. And then everything should adjust nicely for you. In F, it says click the chart elements button on the right side of the chart. Select legend. And it is. Go ahead and click the arrow to open up that smaller box, dialog box, and click the More Options button to open up the Format Legend pane. And that's what this is in the far right here. Select Top Right and deselect Show the Legend without overlapping the chart. And you can see what that does. Here's your legend here, here's the chart, and then we do want it to overlap. Next, you're going to click the Fill button, and you might remember where that's at. That is in the Chart Tools, Design, we, so there we're in the Design, it, it defaults to Design. We want to go into Format because we're formatting something. We're changing the look, so Shape Fill, and change the legend color to brown accent to 50%. And this has changed to look um, a lot darker than we had it. Next, we are going to click the chart frame and get off of our legend. So you want the entire frame. 
And by the way, you don't just want um, the plot area, we want the actual chart frame. So be mindful of where you're clicking at. Um, it can be tricky at times. So click the chart frame, select the chart area, and change the fill shape, uh, change the shape fill color to till. And this is your till column. And we want till accent one, 50% darker. On I, it says select the legend and increase the font size to 18 points. Repeat to increase the vertical axis font size to 18. So your legend, we've got that selected and we're gonna increase that font size to 18. That's back in the home tab. For you techies, go ahead and do your right click if that's what you would like to do. Um, I personally like to just sometimes go back to the home tab. It's a little bit easier sometimes. Change that to 18. Leave it at Franklin uh, Gothic, Gothic. And now we're going to repeat to increase the vertical value axis. And sometimes you have to double click in there. So we're going to change the change this and we want the font size to be 18. And now we're going to select the horizontal category axis. Um, actually, sorry about that. The, this is the legend that should be set at 18. Sorry about that guys. And this is your horizontal axis and this is going to be set to 20. So let me go back just for a second. So I says to select the legend and increase it. This is your legend. This is your uh, vertical axis here. And then this is your horizontal axis. Okay. And that needs to be set at 20. Again, I use, I'm, I come up here and I just go ahead and change the font size back in my home tab. Now on slide six, we are going to apply the moderate frame black picture style to this picture. You will need to select that picture and let me close up my format picture. We don't need that. Sometimes those will open up. You can just X out of those. And we are going to go into picture tools, format tab, make sure that you click on it. And this is the moderate frame black and that's what you want to pick. On slide six, we're going to insert word art text. So in instruction number nine, it says to click the word art button. And for this, we are going to need to go ahead and click off anywhere on slide six, get off of your picture. And in the um, uh, ribbon, you will see uh, insert, and once you're in the insert tab, you're going to go over to the text group and it says word art it shows an A. You will click on the A and you're going to select fill and it's white text one, outline background one, hard shadow background one style. That's a mouthful. Um, it may take you a few minutes if you're um, doing your independence and you have this move on there. Just remember when you hover, there are different things that pop up. So just take your time and take a look. Pick the right one. And we're going to go ahead and type, we're not going to move it just yet, but go ahead and type um, employees are valuable. And then we're going to move this text above the picture. So right above the picture is where you're going to move it. And you might just kind of want to eyeball it just a little bit. Once you've got that, then you're going to click the text effects button. And it's still highlighted, so we don't want to do anything. Don't get off of it. Just leave it selected. And your text effects button is located in your drawing tools, your format tab, and in word art or yes, Word Art Styles Group, you are going to select 
your tax effects, and we want shadow. And then we want to go to offset, diagonal, bottom, right. So you might have to hover just a little bit just to kind of see where we're going. And actually this is it, offset, and this one, that's not it. So let's take a look at the other ones. Inside, diagonal, and we want outside. So let's go back up. This is the offset selection. So we want bottom right, top right, bottom left. Sometimes it takes just a second and it's the third one in. All right, so in D, you're going to click the text outline button now. And that's in the same spot where we were, Drawing Tools, Format tab, Word Art Styles, and Text Outline. We're going to give it some definition. And we want Black, Background 2. So Black, Background 2. And then deselect the Word Art text itself. So you can just click anywhere on that slide. On slide 6, we are going to insert some text boxes down at the bottom here. So, if you think about um, inserting text boxes or adding something to it, you're actually inserting. So, you're going to go to your Insert tab, and the text box is located in the text group. Go ahead and just click that, and it's on. Now, I know it's on because it's highlighted in like a gray thing, uh, gray color, and you can kind of see my cursor or my pointer moving. It's an up down, upside down T or an upside down cross, if you will. If you just left click and hold down your uh, mouse and then let go, you now have a text box. So in 10A, it says to type the dollar sign and we want $74,270. So $74,270, sorry, said it wrong. And to make that big, you can just stretch it just a little bit. We're going to change the font color to black, background two. Up in the ribbon, in the home tab, in the font group, this is your font color. So just click that open. Again, we want black, background two. Increase the size to 20 and apply the bold. And now we're just going to adjust this just a little bit more and play around with it. And that looks great. Now we're going to position it underneath of the first person on the left. And it looks just fine. It looks great. And now we're going to do Control D and we're going to copy that. You're going to grab that second one that you just copied, that second text box, and you're just going to move it over to the second person from the left and underneath of that person. And we're going to repeat this for the next two um, employees of this company. And it's probably easier just to go ahead and make those changes and then do your control D. For some of you, I just go ahead and move mine and then do the control D. You're going to need to double click to get inside of the, uh, the text box itself. And go ahead and type in the new information. Again, these are easy points that you can lose. I warn you to take your time as you're typing. Make sure that you proofread and that you have everything correct because you want all the points that you can get. And that includes SEMnet and not just for your final. Now you're going to select all of the salary text boxes and to do that it's a shift. You can't use your control key so just shift and then left click each one that selects all at the exact same time. Okay, and once you do that, we're going to click the Arrange button, and then we're going to select Align, and then Align Bottom. 
the directions are saying to go to the Drawing Tools Format tab, and in the Drawing Group, it says to select that. So this is really the arrange is what I have. Um, I want to make sure that you're all understanding that there are times that um, the instructions can be misleading and or incorrect. If you're in the Home tab and not the Drawing Tools, you're able to see the Drawing Group and get to Arrange. And then you would just go down to Align and then Align Bottom. The other way would be Drawing Tools, Format, and then over in the Arrange group you see Align and then you're able to Align Bottom. I will be letting the company know that that is a typo, but I did want to point it out to you that there might be times that that could happen. It's not often, but it does happen. Okay, click anywhere and get off of that. Use your scroll bar to go up to slide one. And now let's apply a transition and we're gonna use blinds. So you wanna go to your transition tab. Blinds does not pop up first. It's not one of the popular ones. It's a cool one though. And then you will um, search for blinds. And it says apply all to slides. So apply all, and then apply zoom to slide six. So let's just go down to slide six, select slide six, and you want to use zoom, so use your more button to open up your transitions, and then you're gonna search for zoom. And I'm not for sure if anyone else has noticed, but these are not in, uh, they're not in alpha order. Um, so when you're taking that final, um, Try not to panic too much, just, uh, just take your time and then try to find that. Now, now, when you are finished with this project, your presentation should contain six slides. If it does not, your project will not grade properly and you may lose a significant number of points. Go ahead and save one last time, exit out of there, and let's go and get this puppy loaded. And while it's doing that, um, you notice that this time we did not have anything that indicated if you're 2013, click here, 2016 users, click here. I would uh, venture to guess, and I'll need to double check um, because the homework is new to me this semester as well, that there could be something like that in 20 uh, for your two independent projects. Take your time, read the entire question first, then make the move. Okay, so we are submitting that, and hopefully I didn't lead anybody astray this week. And I got 100%, so I wish you all the best of luck. Remember to use the Ask My Instructor tab. Many of you have, and I so enjoy getting those questions. Be patient with me. Um, be mindful that without me being in front of you, it's a little bit harder sometimes to answer those questions. I am always here uh, a minimum of four days a week. Normally I'm here five days a week. I'm not going anywhere for the holiday, so if you want to get a hold of me, you're starting this weekend, great. Um, that's it. All right, people, peace out, and may the force be with you, and good luck.